been reported. Um, Urban Forestry Commission meeting March 3rd, 2021. So uh, first item on the agenda is our public comment period. Uh, Jackie, uh, you're the only member of the public. Do you have anything that you'd like to say? You're unmuted. Uh, Jackie was muted. She I think she's me. unmuted now. Oh. Yeah, my no comment. Thank you. Thank right. you for Thank the warm you. welcome. Thank you. Okay, next item of business. Uh, review and approve. There's two sets of minutes. Um, the And I put, so the 217, 21 minutes you should have all received. And I hope you had a chance to review them. Mm -hmm. Sue, I just wanted to check. I know you were looking at the 125 minutes. Were you able to? Oh, I was not able to. I am so sorry. I will. Okay. Um, All right. we'll I'll have that for the next one. Okay. All right. So we'll we will not approve those minutes. Um, and please, anyone speak out when they have a question or concern about the 217 minutes. Can I get a minute just to look at them? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, please just take your time. It's just whenever you're ready. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. One thing I'd like to point out, which I've pointed out before, Rich, yep. is in the members present and absent yes. um, uh, grid. Yep. It says time if leaving late or leaving early. And um, I prefer that if anybody leaves at six or later, they, they're not listed as leaving early because it's not that they left early, it's that the meeting has run over, which it has continued to do since we started meeting again. All right, so, okay, I, I don't really, I'm fine with that. I guess I just we need to make another column there because it uh, you you don't really know. So if someone someone were to read the minutes, I guess the way they're written after after we approve them, we have to have on the top page there somewhere that the meeting was actually uh, or, uh, the meeting went later than normal or something, just so we can either rectify that or just not put those in in there at all. Because technically, if you leave the meeting before it's adjourned. Even if it's after the stated time of the meeting, it's still leaving early, I guess. But I don't really. I'm here for the whole meeting, so it doesn't really impact me, I guess. But I well, see here's it. here's my suggestion, and I I suggest it because we experienced it for a full five years when Lily was chair, okay. and it's not a criticism for things that have followed since. But she was always really good at keeping us on time. And if she anticipated that we were going to go beyond six, she would um, either adjust the agenda accordingly or say, are we, are we going to agree to go beyond six? So not to, not to be too technical, but I, I really strongly suggest, even though we have such great things to share, that's not the point. We have great things to share, but either we vote to lengthen the meeting, it used to be two hours, or we agree to just really try to stay on track. And if we're gonna go beyond six to, to take a vote, because I have a commitment at six during the pandemic and I can't stay beyond six as long as we're meeting virtually. So, but it's not just about me, it's also just about the procedure. Well, I will, let the commission bat that around. I I don't really have any commitments after six o'clock. So I, I, I do realize that the agenda, not to get off topic of, we're actually talking about the minutes, but not, the agenda has been packed a lot because of the amount of, part of the reason the agenda has been packed and we've had to do so much is because of the nature of what happened. I think A, we lost multiple months of work too. Um, the, um, work on the STO and the two family by right came so quickly and we, we were working not on our own timeline, but someone else's timeline. So I do recognize, and Marilyn brings a good point, there have been a lot of agenda items packed tightly together 
plus our regular routine business that we would normally do at this time of year. So um, that's the only thing I can say about the packed agenda. And I've tried to make our agendas, uh, yeah, agenda items have more time so we can talk about them. Uh, since Marilyn first made that suggestion, um, I think last month or the end of December. So, you know, if folks want to go have their meeting be longer, that's we can have that discussion at some point if you'd like, but I don't think this is the right time frame to do that. Yeah, so maybe we can um, get over the STO and the two family issue and then reevaluate whether, you know, how we're doing, because maybe we don't have, maybe we have plenty of time within the hour and a half. That's, that's, that's fine. It's always good to look at our procedures and the amount of stuff we're trying to do. And, you know, again, we, we're the only commission that meets twice a month other than the city council. So it's pretty, um, pretty impressive that we're able to do all that. Uh, be able to, pretty impressive that all of us can carve the time out to do this to actually all meet twice a month. So, and we're not, we're not a, um, a legislative body, so. <laughs> So we could definitely try to bring this up at a different time frame, or if we have time at the end of this meeting, Marilyn, be more than happy to try to uh, try to change that around. And then if I guess if we end up going to six, then we just stop the meeting if we're in the middle of a conversation. I think that's part of the problem too. That's why we've run, we've run over. But well, that that's where too a timekeeper can just really be a, a great assistant. Just not not being not interrupting or being rude, but just sort of gently reminding us, you know, mm -hmm. we've allowed this much time, we've got one minute left, just, you know, keep things moving, keep things, um, I think it's possible. So it's, that we can, mm -hmm. we can have great discussions, get, get great work done and do so within our allotted time. Okay, thank you. So with that, who wants to be a timekeeper? <laughs> I'll do it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Sue. Okay. Um, I was away during the last meeting, so I won't chime in on the minutes. And, and I missed a substantial part of it, so I will also not chime in. Does that mean you'll be abstaining when the vote happens? I will, yes. Yes, and so will I. Other commissioner have comments on the minutes? Changes, suggestions? I make a motion to accept the minutes That's, that would be the minutes from february 17th 2021 correct the meetings all right um is there a second a second thank you marilyn uh all in favor let's do a quick roll call beth would you call the roll please david uh yes i approve Rich? Yes. Susan? Yes. Jen? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Five ayes and two abstentions. Okay. Um, fair report. So, I think of uh, well, other than we had wind, a lot of wind damage, obviously the other day. Uh, it, Monday night, very windy. Um, we have thirty different locations that have to be cleaned up throughout the city. Uh, not, not several whole tree failures, but not, um, not as bad as the same kind of windstorm we had two, uh, two winters ago in February. So, 
So our urban forestry program and tree removal program and tree trimming program of the mature trees has actually paid off. Most of the tree damage was private trees that actually fell off the private property into the public right away that we have to clean up and move out of the way. Um, I wanted to let you know that I did attend the uh, Main Street redesign meeting, the public forum. I don't know how many, I think Sue, I don't know if Sue was on there or not. I don't remember. There's a lot of people there. Um, I came in late. Yeah. There was a lot of, um, there was a lot of good feedback. The, the, the meeting basically focused around how we got to designing where we are today in the design process of Main Street. Um, the, um, the architect or the landscape architect or the designer that's been selected by the city spent a great number of, a great amount of time actually providing a lot of data um, that actually showed where, how they got to where they are today based on different design models that were put together over the years. They had crash data. They did a small tree inventory um, they did crop, they did all kinds of um, data, like a huge data dump that's actually in a very readable form that is actually on the planning and sustainability's uh, webpage. Because part of the, many of the complaints were that there was not enough public input as to how, how Main Street is being redesigned. And a lot of folks felt that the design and the process was being pushed too quickly. Uh, so there, that was their response from um, the city and from the actual designer, which I thought was a really good. But in the end, there was a lot of public comment um, because that, that was uh, all that was uh, really um, talked about in the meeting. A lot of public comment about how people felt about the Main Street redesign in essence of mm -hmm. the communication from City Hall um, or the lack of communication from City Hall. Plus, there's a lot of folks that are definitely against um, changing the configuration of Main Street and changing it just to, uh, you know, one lane uh, either direction, which would be tightening up Main Street, thus creating uh, more, more uh, sidewalk space, tree planting area, um, amenity area. So there will be many more um, public, public forums the design, uh, they actually are probably going to come back in June, or July, for the maybe with the 25% design. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what what that actually looks like. Um, I'm part of that um, design subcommittee that's made up of city employees um, and other stakeholders from the beginning. So I will forward you the link to that um, website so you can all take a look at it. Uh, the other thing is, is that uh, quickly, I'll just say that the, um, the lower Pleasant Street design, um, which is the section of Pleasant Street from Ockenham Road to the roundabout is actually at the, almost at the, is at the 25% design process. And this project has been funded and will be going forward. Um, this was a project that last year, uh, Rob and I uh, walked around and actually cited a whole bunch of locations for new tree plantings within that layout. And now they've actually requested some help with um, the different uh, um, perennial plantings that are gonna happen there. There's gonna be small perennial, like I guess not bioswales. I don't know, Jen, what would be the right term to call them? Um, small planting areas in, in, in the tree belt that are gonna be made of salt tolerant perennial plants. So I gave, um, I asked Jen to give me a hand uh, as my, in my role as a tree warden to actually look at Look at the plans. Um, when I get an elect, I have an electronic copy that I'll send all of you, so you can see what the project looks like. But um, I, I need some extra eyes on it because I am not a perennial plant guru. I just do trees. Sorry to say. <laughs> uh, and we're um, two minutes over. Okay. All right. I'll I'll stop after that. Uh, no public shade tree hearings on the docket, um, and that is all I have to say. Next item is Urban Forestry uh, Commission goals, or 2021 goals and objectives. Okay, how about if I share a screen? Absolutely, hold on. Okay, here we go. Second. Yeah. Oh no, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Hold on, make co-host. Yes, 
You should be good. Here we go. Okay. Okay. That's one of the security features that I had it checked ah. off. Okay. Here we have some bright colors. Um, so did everybody have a chance to go through and put X's under their names for the things that they want to do? Or did, is there anybody who did not have a chance to do that? Can you guys hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So it sounds like everybody did that. That's good. I did. I, Molly, I didn't do it, but. Oh, okay. Molly, um, could, Molly, could you uh, make your, um, can you shrink that a little bit? So maybe it's like 75% it. or 50%. You also oh. might be able to go into view and, and go present and it'll fill up more of the oh, well, Hold on. There's a chart. Um, you go if you go all the way to the right. There's that up arrow. Well, okay. actually, go right over here where it says 100 percent, right to your left or to my <laughs> left. Sorry. <laughs> oh, right there. Yes, got yeah. it. Got it. Okay. Uh, maybe go 75 and see if it. Yeah. Okay. Really, see that? Yeah. Or, okay. Uh, then you can have the people's our pictures on the right. Is that why you want me to do that? No, it's well. So we yeah we can see everyone what things were checked off, and I don't know if. Uh, okay. If, People can see that. The other thing you can do is go to view. Wait, you can't you can't see that? It's yeah, I can see it. I'm just saying that if you want to get rid of like the toolbar and stuff of what we're seeing, you can go to oh. view and okay. present. Full screen, I think it is. Yeah. Um, yep. Full screen. Yep. Um okay. And if you need to do something, just press escape. Okay, got it. Yep. Okay, so um, is what we're going to do now is to go through this and see which things have enough people to do them, I guess. Um, so on the red items are the top priorities. Mm -hmm. And uh, updating the STO, is that almost done now? It is. Uh, the, I, I sent you all a clean draft. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got an email, that's that's what we have to bat around at the. Uh, all right, so it's it's in process. Yep. Anyway, um, so publicity campaign. Um, Rich, Rob, Marilyn um, have signed up for it. I put a question mark. Um, so I I could help work on that. The door, um, the door hangers. So that's that's something that we're definitely going to do. The red things we're definitely going to do. Okay, next down into the green. Um, urban tree canopy assessment. Um, I can still do the things I said to just look into it. Um, I'll still do that, but I don't know what the next steps are. So I don't know if we'll need more people to help out on that. That'll be. Um, determined, I guess. Um, the tree inventory um, for leads, um, I checked off and Christine checked off. I actually, I did send an email to Chris to ask her if she still wants to do activities, even though she's not coming to the meetings. And I, I haven't heard back from her yet. But um, yeah, I'll still try to reach her. So we'll, I'll do, I'll definitely do that. Um, let's see, working on the species list and the tree care guide, uh, Rich, Rob and Jen, that's probably enough people to do that, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, identify streets used as cut throughs. Um, I signed up for that and Chris, is there anybody else who's interested in that? Um, this would be to determine it for traffic calming. Yeah, that they would be priority another another priority that we could um, uh, for planting. Yeah, Molly, mm -hmm. um, I had emailed Christina about you know just thanking her so much and telling I was um, sad she didn't want to keep coming to the meetings, and she said she still she said sorry and um, never responded. 
Thanks for your kind words. Sue, I will continue to do some outdoor type work with the UFC. Okay, great. Okay, good. She didn't enjoy the STO work, but she'd like to do the outdoor work. So if that answers your question, I think she'd be yeah. happy to do it. Okay, great. Um, okay, so Chris and I will work on that. Um, now, evaluating the neighborhood tree planting program. This is great. We've got four people on that. Rich, Sue, Rob, and Chris. Christina. Christina, yeah. yeah. Um, so that will happen. Um, looking into the urban wood bank, uh, Rob and Jen are interested in that. Um, so that should be enough people to find out what's involved with that. Um, yeah, this one here, assess progress on meeting our 2020 planting goals. At some point we need to, once we get all the data from the tree planting in 2020, we need to um, sort it and everything to see how it matches up with what we said we were gonna do for priorities in 2020 and see, you know, see how we're doing on that. So, um, wow, a lot of people signed up for that. Everybody. Yeah, that's great. Um, but the first step for that is to actually get the data about where trees were planted. Um, so that will happen. Um, preemptive. Do, do you think we have something reasonably good? Is it, Rich, what state, what, what's the status of that? Uh, Rob, Rob sent me a master, uh, an Excel, the master of everything that was planted. And I basically have to plug it into the Google sheet that I have. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I have to make sure everything is, the fields all work. And then I can actually send you all, all uh, I'll make a copy of it and send you a link to the copy of it. I just, I haven't been able to get to it because I just finished our Tree City USA application and I'm working on the tree plant, uh, tree planting or the tree purchasing contracts. Yeah. All right. Um, but it's got to, it's got to get done because I, we have to analyze the data. Right. To see where, if we are near our targeted goals. So at some point soon we'll have on our agenda for the meeting as to how to, how to tackle that exactly. Okay. Um, okay. Preemptive education about the uh, spotted lantern fly. Uh, I and Jen and Christina signed up for that. Um, I think I probably, this is Jen. I think I probably need to, like I can't do all these things I can see. I could probably really commit to, um, you know, I probably, I'm interested in that and I'd be happy to be a sounding board, you know, but I don't think I could deeply okay. participate in that. Okay. Um, just for everyone's interest, there's um, the DCR has a newsletter that Molly Freilicher puts out and there's an, um, a link to an article about how New York State is launching a huge project for public awareness huh. and teaching people how to destroy the egg clusters on cars. Mm -hmm. I guess they move by car. Yeah. yeah. So just so everybody, if they're, they wanna learn more about that, there is an initiative in New York State, a big one. Can you send me the um, information about that? Yep. Okay, so I, I will work on that and see if Christina wants to do it too. Um, interpretive program, it looks like only Marilyn signed up for that. Is there anybody else who's interested in working on that? Um, I'm interested in that. Oh. Okay, great. I, I guess I, I have a question, which is the uh, publicity campaign in, in red. Yes. Um, why is that uh, so, I guess, narrowly drawn? I mean, couldn't that be more about um, educating the community about the benefits of trees? Um, uh, because, well, I think it's because we talked about these two things earlier. We're, mm -hmm. we're trying to focus on setback plantings more and more. Right. And so, and, and the tree inventory surveys that we've been doing, a lot of the sites that we've identified are setback plantings. And so the next step is to contact the landowners and see if, if they're willing to do setbacks. So it, it seems like that's an important next step if we wanna proceed with using that, um, you know, tree inventory work to, you know, to target places to plant. 
Right. All right. I see. So it's really related to the to the setback. I, I get the yeah. Answer. And the first one is um, any place where we put the white stakes out, where we are going to do a planting to have a little information to give somebody whose house it's at to just let them know what the white stakes are for. That's well. So I guess the part of the answer that Molly has stated is there's there's urgency to getting that part done. And so, um, because it's affecting where we can plant trees, it's adversely affecting not having the, the outreach and not having the pamphlet. Right. But there's a ton more to do. Which yeah. We can hopefully get over this, you know, get the door hanger made and um, maybe some letters that we write that are standard boilerplate. And then oh, I'd like on. to do that. Yeah. Oh, good. Because oh, this shouldn't take too long. Really. I'll, put, I'll put an X for you, Sue. I think I'm gonna, Thanks. I'm gonna drop out of that one because I have a lot of other things instead that I'm working on. Okay. Um, okay. So down here, back to this, um, this one about the uh, interpretive program. Dave and Marilyn are on that. Is that? Um, do you guys feel comfortable um, working on it, just the two of you? Or do you feel like that's not enough of a um, critical mass to get it done? Well, maybe we can we can propose something and discuss it at a at a at a meeting. Yeah. And then if people are involved, interested in getting involved, mm -hmm. how's that sound, David? Uh, that sounds. I think that's a great idea. Um, okay. And Molly, if I could just ask one more question. So uh, sure. Sue and I have been. And, and Rich have been talking about kind of um, integrating the UFC's work with other agencies. I don't see that in this table. Can we insert insert that? Oh yeah, yeah, we definitely can. Um, let's see. I thought there was a thing. Oh, other agencies within the city, you mean? Is that what you mean? Other like city departments or other agencies like DCR? Uh, I mean, like all the advisory boards and uh, the planning the board. City. Within the city. In the city. Um, Messaging for counselor, you know, ward representatives. And... Yeah, I'll, um, I'll make a, a new row for that. Wait, hold on a second. I want to make it green, so I'm going to go there. Okay, so I'll call it, uh, what do you want me to call it? Um, Cooperation with or collaboration. Okay. Okay, so who wants to work on that? It sounds like Dave. Yeah, I, I would love to work on that. Okay. Anybody else want to work on that? Yeah, you can you can put put me in there because I have okay. one of the, the contacts. Okay. Anybody else? I'd be willing. Okay. I'm good at identifying voices, aren't I? You are. <laughs> we could all turn off our cameras and play voice, <laughs> voice guests. We have nine more minutes for goals. Okay. We're, I think we're going to meet it. Um, so this one, community forest report, right above what we just did. Um, this is just the annual state of the urban forest report to the city council. And this is great to have two people on it because you guys can help not just give the report, but like um, figure out what should go in it. Yeah. So I think two people should be adequate for that. Do you guys agree, Sue and Marilyn? I agree. I think that it's, again, um, Rich is going to shoulder a burden on here because, you know, he's kind of the point person yeah. on any data because we're going to need data to describe the state of the urban forest. Yeah. All right, Rich, is it okay if I check you off on that one? Sure. But he's on every single one. Why not? <laughs> thing realistically to do it. I'm not gonna have any time to go planting anymore. I'm just gonna no. have to stay here now. And... <laughs> oh. Maybe you could put Rich in parentheses, just that others are sort of taking the lead and he's he's our go-to guy for yeah, yeah. details. Okay, I will do that. 
Okay, now we're into the yellow. Um, so all those things that we talked about in green are going to happen. Um, now the yellow one, this the first one, additional credentials, just as if a workshop or something comes up that any of us want to go to, we could go to it. So that's why I just put question marks there. Um, Rich always has something that he goes to. Um, I did it during that storm. I had my iPhone plugged in and I listened oh. to the community tree conference for six Great. hours as I was driving around. So yes. Great. Okay. The all the things in yellow are things that pretty much automatically happen anyway, so they don't really need people to like uh, check off. So we're all involved in helping um, planning, <laughs> tree planning projects, uh, um, ongoing planting of trees. We're all involved in that to some extent. Um, and then these other things are all things that Rich collects data on or does. The pruning, um, the tree protection, um, and then the figuring out the, you know, calculating the survival, calculating the planting to removals ratio, um, and then enforcement proceedings are just things that come up that Rich has to deal with. Um, so those are all just going to happen anyway. Um, is there anybody else who wants to sign up for pruning trees? Well, um, you do it, right? So Tree Northampton, I think you have a check mark. At Tree yes. North. Yeah, I have it for Tree Northampton. Yeah. So Tree Northampton is very active right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I'll put you in there, Rob, because you're sure. definitely doing that. Okay. Now the gray, these are things that we really don't need to do. Um, and it looks like nobody had an exciting passion to do any one of those. So we'll just. Um, well, I think the tree care is ongoing. It's more of the yellow. No, I'm talking about the gray now. Yeah. Um, one, two, three, the fourth one down, volunteer oh. tree care. That has to do with um, training volunteers and um, training people for tree planting and pruning. And I think we decided not to focus on that this year because of COVID. Got it. Right. Could I, I make a suggestion that we yeah. take that line because it is an actual growth award? Um, we can get points for that for our growth award. If we were to put that up underneath young or above young tree train, move it yeah. out of there because if we end up actually having uh, new volunteers, which we do get new volunteers from Tree Northampton, there is a level of training that happens. So if we're, oh. able, to, if we're able to document that training, okay. Um, we could actually utilize that for our um, for our growth award and can just be part of kind of part of what we're already doing. Um, so I, I will mention, I don't know where it fits in, but um, Tree Northampton is hopefully working with Jay Gerard to, to formalize some of the tree training. And we'll be yeah. connecting with Rich about that. Oh, yeah, so. I'd say that's happening. Tree training, since you have Jay involved in what you're doing now. Definitely. I mean, that's his, that's the reason you have him working yes. with you right now, yes. is so, tree so training. Jay, so Jay uh, Gerard has returned to the scene and is, and is um, working on training, uh, for, Pruning training, quite oh, a bit. Oh wow! Like twice a week. Great. I put I put his name in there, oh, over good. on the right, and I checked off Tree Northampton yeah. and Rich. Yeah. And for David's benefit, um, Jay used to be one one of the commissioners. He's right. an arborist. He, he, and he was the arborist at Smith College, and works for DCR currently. Oh really? Okay, we've made our way through this. Um, this thing. So what everybody should do is on your own time, go back and um, look at all the things that you signed up for and make yourself a list of what you signed up for your, your own personal to do list so that you can keep track of what um, what you said you were going to work on this year. So I, I have a question, Molly. Mm -hmm. There are multiples, you know, there are multiple um, members that are going to be working together. Uh huh. So how, how do we do that with- Oh, over maybe we need a point person for each one. Like who's, who's the one who's gonna kind of organize the others in that group? Yeah, but I mean, are we allowed to communicate with each other? 
Um, no. no. That's a really good question. No. Can't they be no. subcommittees? Can't we do yes. that? Yes. Then you need minutes. You need you need to have a subcommittee that has to have a posted agenda and has oh. to have. Woo. You know. well, I have a question. That's you, crazy. Can can two people meet without that? What's the number of people that become a? So so the issue meeting? becomes that if you are working on items that are going to come in front of the full commission for discussion and a vote, you're actually violating open meeting law according to our present city solicitor. Can we go through these and decide which things rise to that level? I well, mean, I, well, I, yes. I mean, I, to be honest with you, my, you know, my, my uh, instructions were, if you're not sure, just post, post a meeting agenda. <laughs> right, but I mean, for instance, Tree Northampton working with Jay to make a video about tree pruning, that wouldn't rise. No. We're sure that. No. So I think if we just went through that, we could, we could maybe pick out a bunch of stuff that doesn't. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm just. Who wants to be the parliamentarian? Uh, Sue, do you want to, do you want to decide and just put a notation? I've been trying to wade through the open meeting law and to tell you the truth, it, it, it's rather um, confusing to me. So, but the guideline is if you're gonna vote on it, Right. You shouldn't be, but I don't think we're going to vote on making a video for pruner training. Right. And we're not going to vote on um, like what our numbers are, you know, like what, what, what whether we've met our, so a lot of it's just data gathering and, and there's no vote in the end. We just want information. Mm. And, well, let's, let me look at them. I, I have trouble reading them. Hmm. Well, that, that is a good question. Like this one, evaluate neighborhood tree. Can you guys see the arrow that I'm moving around or no? Yeah. Yes. Okay. But I can't read the print because it's too small. On my oh, computer. but you guys wanted me to make it small. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> okay. I'm saying I, I can see the arrow, but I'm not reading the print. All right, it says evaluate neighborhood tree planting program. Um, so that's the kind of thing where, um, I, 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 do we bring that to a meeting? In, in the end, we will have to bring it to the meeting, at least as a report. Maybe we don't have to vote on it. Um, maybe that's the thing, like just things that, so it's only things that have to be voted on, right? Like It's only, it's only things that will come in front of the full body of the commission and actually receive some kind of discussion at the full commission. Hmm. So if, a, if multiple commissioners have a conversation on the street about a change in... Um, the neighborhood tree planting program. And then those commissioners, one, one commissioner um, makes a motion and the same commit, the next commissioner makes a seconds the motion. And you've talked about something outside of the public realm that people don't know about. Mm. And then it gets voted on. That's a, that's a good example of violation of open meeting law. Mm. But could you have say two people meeting on it? Like let's say Sue and Rob got together um, and that that actually wouldn't be violating, right? Because it's just two. And then Christine too. But the problem is, is that when the when the information comes to the commission and the commission decides to take up a vote to modify the program, the discussions to modify the program were held outside of the public view. That's a violation of open meeting law. Mm. Wow. That, that yeah, that basically we have to put it on the agenda. And as a group decide how we want to evaluate it and then yeah. go through an evaluation process. Yeah, I guess so. Ugh. Um, because the last, okay, here's my question. This is, um, so the last time I worked on the um, tree inventory, uh, the species list and public tree care guide. Yes. Like I met with Rob and then I met with um, Jay Gerard and kind of put it together and then I met with uh, Rich at least once and then, then I met with, um, oh my gosh, why do I keep forgetting her name? Alicia. Oh my goodness, that's terrible, uh, Alicia. And like, that's the way it got done, you know, basically. Correct. And then we didn't vote on it, did we? Well, we did. We discussed oh, we did it. Vote on it. Yep. 
Yeah, we, we voted on it, and then the planning board voted on it, and then the city council voted on it because it's in the ordinance. Oh, really? Yes. So that is an right. example, unfortunately, of a violation of open meeting law. The, the whole the whole subcommittee criteria is really just kind of tricky because subcommittees are considered working groups of the whole body. So if you have two or more two commissioners talking about anything that's going to come in front of the whole body that will eventually result in a vote of some sort that's in the public. There has to be documentation and there has to be an agenda and there has to be minutes to, to prove to the public that this was actually not something that was discussed in somebody's backyard and decided upon and then voted. You know, it's, it's the transparency issue. And those meetings have to be like if I wanted to meet with Rob about or you, Rich, about the tree guide. Well, yes. I don't have a problem making up an agenda and keeping minutes, but we would have to post somewhere yes. when we were going to meet. And, yes. Yes. Okay. But if you but but if you and I were out walking around on the street looking at a couple of tree planting locations, that's fine. Gotcha. We're over a, bit, a couple minutes, so. Okay. I, can I make a quick suggestion? I mean, it might not be realistic, but maybe we should assign one person to each of these tasks to just get started on it and then uh, think about how to go from there, because otherwise we're just stalled for the moment. I don't know that we have time in this meeting to do that, correct? Right. Hmm. But we could work, we could think of that as a way of just individually, one at a time. Can we quick go down door hanger? Who wants to be lead? But, 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 but or, Jen's pointing out we don't have time to. Oh, oh okay. Today, today, today. Okay, so we'll have to do this again next meeting. Yeah, we'll just have Good. to. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, I will unshare my screen. Thank you. We did go a little over. Sorry, Marilyn. Um, we'll make up the speed. All right, here we go. All right, so our next agenda item is significant tree and two family by right ordinance update. Did everyone get the, the STO clean draft I sent to? Yeah. Yes. Did you have a chance to review it? Yes, the STO? Yes, sir. Jeff. Yes. I reviewed it, but I'm a little confused about how this fits in to something else bigger, because it just starts out with one inventory of any significant trees. I mean, where does that? I don't understand how that. Um, okay, let me. Uh, supposed to do that? How does this? Sec. Um, the section of the code three fifty dash eleven one in requirements number one. Oh. Are these just changes that are being made to a bigger thing? So it, so, so 350, 350 is the actual section of the zoning code, zoning ordinances for the city. Mm. So what you had to do is the STO is uh, 350 dash uh, um, 12.3 is the actual where it talks about everything. So what you had to do is you have to go backwards in the zoning code to the very beginning and find out like where the definitions are. So oh okay. So 350-11.4 requirements. This is part of the submittal requirements for a applicant. They have to inventory inventory of any significant tree over presently it's 20 inches. We're making we're asking it to be made 10. Oh. And then um, every subset I made so. Um, 350-21 is the actual definition of um, what a significant tree is. That's in a different section of the or zoning oh, order. Oh, I see. Okay. Yep. Um, so this first section really is a subset of all of the applicants' requirements when they when they submit an application to uh, the planning and sustainability. So I, I've got a couple of questions before I can really think about the meaning of it. Mm -hmm. I think David or could answer them or, or Rich. Um, so E under E, uh, 
E1C, minimum of 24 months. So these trees are, are looked at after by the city for 24 months or when it says minimum, does that mean that they plan to have it be much longer than that? Because 24 months is a um, short time in the life of a tree. It's a, it reads replacement trees shall be maintained in good health a minimum of 24 months after they are planted. So, so, that, so correct. So as the, the tree warden has the power through this ordinance to actually monitor the health of those trees they planted for 24 months, if the trees are not healthy, is deemed by the tree warden without any any you know without any other say from another arborist, I can actually force the applicant through the planning department to replace the trees. Once that 24 month um, time frame is gone, and I'll give you an example, the trees that are at the Leah dealership that were uh, pollarded supposedly. Mm -hmm. That's what I was um, thinking about. Right, so if those trees actually were killed and they, they, they died from the um, pollarding, or the so-called pollarding, then what would happen is that as it's a part of their planning, um, planning board approval, they have to maintain those trees. Those, so you can't, they, they just can't decide to take trees down and not replace them in order to actually abide by their planning, um, the, the planning permit that they were granted, they have to maintain the trees and they have to be healthy. So, so, so it goes beyond the 24 months then. It's, it, it's in a, di it's a different, it's, um, you have to kind of separate the two. Okay. So the, the 24 months really is the jurisdiction for the tree warden to say that those trees uh, are in good health right. or poor health. After that, if, if I happen to go by there three years and the, I see the tree is dead, what I would do is I would call Carolyn or someone in planning and I would say there's two or three trees that are dead in this, in this uh, project that was uh, approved by site plan review. Can you please have the building inspector send them a letter to actually get the trees Thank replaced? You. Thank you. My confusion, I kind of knew some of yep. what. No, it's fine. Thank you. It's fine. So that doesn't need to be in here? What's that? What you just explained. No, no, because it's not part of the ordinance. Hmm. It's not part of this particular ordinance. It's in a different oh, part. Oh, it's a different of, uh, thing. Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. So, so if so if we owned so if I owned a, a piece of commercial property that was developed and I had site plan approval and I sold that parcel to you, Molly, uh -huh. then you you are actually bound by the site plan approval permit. So you can't come in there and cut down the trees and knock the building down without going back in front of the planning board and you have to explain why you're going to do it and then the planning board would set criteria that would force you to basically restore everything that you are removing because the landscape so for example it's like a buffer zone between mm -hmm. two commercial buildings there is a minimum buffer zone that's required so if i were to buy the building from you and i decided to cut down all the arborvitaes i'm in violation of the actual original building permit or the site plan approval i know it's confusing but it's just it's it's it would be nice if everything is was in one place but because we're dealing with multiple um avenues to build buildings, either on the state, you know, through state zoning and through local zoning, we have multiple pieces that are in different places within the zoning code. So I have an, another question, which mm -hmm. is um, maybe David could tackle this is what, what do you think is the most controversial part of this as you, as we think of presenting it to the rest of the city? Uh, I, I don't I don't think it is controversial, which in itself might be a problem because we're not stretching, but I don't I mean, it could be the um, reduction from 20 inches DBH to 10 uh -huh. is it's going to just ca capture many more trees. Right. Um, and then, Molly, I did want to just address your question about this. If you were I think that it, if you had to just uh, highlight in red the the most important part of the STO, it would be 350-12.3B. And the STO is kind of like a self-contained um, ordinance. Oh. But, then, but then that provision refers to the site plan process, which is what the first wow. 
um, which is what uh, uh, 350-11.4 is part of, and that's why it's confusing, if that helps. Yeah. Okay. Seven minute warning. So does anyone else have some part of this that they see as particularly controversial or worth talking about? Because I read it, I didn't see anything that, that caught my eye that I felt we needed especially to discuss. I did notice the change to 10 inches. I don't know if David or Rich has sort of run this already by the other people that will be looking at this that might have, or whether it's controversial in the community or not. But other than that. Um, for, for me to evaluate it, it would be helpful to know what, um, what it used to be. Like, what did it get changed to from what it is now? Um, do we still have the version with all of the edits that we've been looking at at the different meetings? Remember the red? Yep, I have that version in the drive. Would it make sense to send it back out to everybody or can. if you search your emails for me you'll see that that is that is the first draft that i sent okay so you may have it if you don't have it please uh, feel free to you know hit me with an email and i'll send it to you right away it isn't it is in the uh drive but i mean if you don't work in the drive all the time oh. it's kind of hard to find oh okay I work so, in, I can go it, to the drive. It is, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in there, but I've tried to organize it, but I've been gotten a little lazy lately. My apologies. It's pretty well organized. Yeah. I feel like we've I gone through fine. the versions with red, even going back to when Lily was working on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been talking about it for a long time. I don't think there's any surprises at this point. What is just a FYI procedurally? What's the process? Now, like, do we does somebody make a motion to approve? Like, what's what's the next steps? I guess I'm curious. So, if the commission is uh, okay with the recommended changes or the draft changes, then we would have to vote on it as a commission. And then, what I believe we would have, the best thing for us to do is to actually get some sponsorship from Planning and Sustainability because I don't think we're going to be able to carry the water by ourselves, you know, because we really need to, because we're an executive, uh, an executive branch commission and we work for the mayor, we need to have executive branch support to get this done. So typically, um, you know, upon the, you would have upon the recommendation of the mayor, planning and sustainability and urban forestry commission, we, we, we uh, respectfully request to make the following changes to 350-114, so on and so forth. And then it would go through the whole, um, it would go through the whole process. And who would like try to get planning and sustainability on board? Like who, who would you do that, Rich? Or like, you know? Um, well, I think what, when we had a working group in person, it was uh, myself, David and Lily. So I would, and I think the dynamics are a little different right now. And I think we would end up having, I think it would be good for this, we, us to meet as a group. And I would want to meet with, I think we're meeting with Wayne and Carolyn, just because of the level of, um, um, the level of scrutiny that this has come under based upon the, um, all the single family home construction that's been going on through the city. Uh, I think that Wayne's involvement is going to be, it's going to be Wayne mainly with Carolyn. And that's where I would, I would expect some pushback. Um, I don't know what kind of pushback, but, um, and this really has nothing to do with uh, by right zoning. This just has to do with planning board, um, uh, planning board site plan approval. Well, that's would be my thought as to where we would go with it. So I would basically, if you approve this, I would ask them to make a meeting so we can actually discuss our recommended changes and try to basically get, uh, for a better term, some bipartisan um, work done to make it happen so we can actually get it from the city council. Well, I'd like to make a motion. I, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the 
changes, um, the proposed changes to the STO um, and present it to, um, who did you just say? To the zoning board? The, sustainability. Planning, planning, the Office of Planning and Sustainability. Yes. I second the motion. Any discussion? No discussion. Um, oh, well, I, have, I have a question. So when you yeah. say present, you're you're going there to to, to 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 see how they feel about it, and then it's a negotiation. You're not. I mean, or yeah. or, or are we saying that's it? No, I mean, so so there's a couple different ways of doing this. If I have a couple of minutes, I'll explain it. Um, two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. So there's a couple of ways to do this. We can actually make this a. Uh, we can actually go to planning and sustainability and present this to them and work with them uh, to get this in front of the mayor and have the mayor sponsor this ordinance in front of city council. Um, because that would be the, because we're an executive branch commission, that's, you know, that's what we would do. Um, if um, we go to planning and sustainability and the message is loud and clear that we don't want to do any of this and we don't want to um, collaborate with you on this right now, then personally speaking, I would actually, um, you know, we have every right to reach out to uh, one of our city councilors at large because you can actually legislate this uh, using legislation and having multiple uh, city councilors uh, actually make, uh, you know, upon a recommendation of councilor X and councilor Y, um, we would like to change the zoning ordinance, blah, 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 which is not really the, the optimum route to go. I mean, I would prefer to have buy-in. Um, I mean, ideally we want to strengthen our working relationship with planning and sustainability versus being in an adversarial relationship. So, so I guess the, what I see is that we can vote that you, for you to, that we approve you're taking this and trying to, to see how far you can get with planning. Yeah. And, and then after that, we'll reconsider what to do. Is that? Yeah. No. Okay. All right. So there's a, any other discussion? You get all that, Beth? <laughs> uh, David. Well, I just, I, I just have a question. So uh, I, I, I think Jen and Rob's questions are great because I, I too have procedural questions. Like, are we, can, can we imagine that in a week it'll be all these Zoom squares plus Carolyn plus Wayne, and we'll we're going to be kind of engaged in open discussion about the twenty to ten recommendation plus other other things. Uh, that's a good question. I I guess personally, what I think we should do is we should actually. I think what I should do is I should probably send an email to Wayne and Carolyn and, and tell them that we the commission has. Um, requested a meeting to talk about the significant tree ordinance and has drafted some changes to the ordinance that we'd like to discuss with you and then see what their response is. I mean, Carolyn is aware of this. She knows that we've been working on this. I just haven't told her what the what what we've actually been working on because some of the things in here actually will um, make her life a little more difficult um, just because of uh, tracking issues because she is planning sustainability, tracks everything that happens on this uh, ordinance. And then once we get some kind of feedback from them, then I, I think what we should do is the folks that um, like myself, David and, 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 and Sue, uh, we worked on this. So if we were going to meet with them, we should meet with them and have a meeting if they're willing to meet. To, to subcommittee. Yeah. So I would schedule like a subcommittee meeting and then invite Wayne and Carolyn to come to the meeting, I think would be the appropriate thing to do. You know, or I could send it to them and they say, oh, it's great. Thanks. And that, that'd be even better. <laughs> There'd be no negotiation needed. But I'm sure there's going to be some, yeah. some, some discussion. So should I modify my, my motion to say, um, um, run it by Wayne and Carolyn to get an initial sense of their um, support? Their support, yeah. And, and then to meet as a subcommittee if necessary, or, or if you want, seems advisable. 
Shall I second it? That yeah, I, motion? I, one, I just have one question, David. Did that answer your question? Yeah, I think I I, I think your instincts are are very sound there. Uh, my only question is whether the whole commission would benefit from hearing Carolyn uh, explain her her resistance, though, because um, I, I always feel like I benefit from her descriptions. So, yeah, I mean, I I, I agree with that. I, I think that would be um, I would think that we've been I would think that'd be beneficial as well. So I think that's good for me to reach out to them and kind of figure out. Once they read the changes, if they agree with them, then everything we're talking about is kind of a moot point. But if not, then we have to, you know, we should meet as a subcommittee with them to discuss why they don't want to make the changes. And then we can report back to the commission. That's that's the way that I'm kind of viewing this. But I'm we can invite them to a whole commission meeting as well. I don't have an issue with that either. I, I, it might make them feel a little bit like we're, like, uh, I don't know, it might be more comfortable just talking to people that they've already negotiated with. And, and are, if it is a, 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 an official meeting, is it being recorded? Yes, yes. I, I'm happy watching the video. <laughs> streaming, streaming at home. I've gotten used to it. Okay, we're over, just so everybody knows. We're, we're four right. minutes into our next item. All right, so we take a vote. I, I propose we vote to have. Yes. Could we forward. clarify the motion, please, for me before we vote? <laughs> yes. Fair yeah. enough. Who would like to clarify the motion? Not me. <laughs> so the motion on the floor, as I understand it, as amended, <laughs> is to take a vote to agree that rich contacts, planning and sustainability to tell them that we have come up with uh, amendments to the STO and figure out where they stand on it and then go from there. Does that make sense? Well, I, I guess that Rich will contact them and then we're approving a subcommittee to then subsequently meet with them. Yeah, that's better. That's good. Okay. Clear as mud, Beth? Yeah. Um, so the amended motion is to take a vote to agree that Rich will be contacting planning and sustainability to see if they want to schedule a subcommittee meeting on. Um, how about back up a bit? Rich will be sending out the ch amended, the changes for the STO to planning and sustainability. And if discussion is needed, a subcommittee is supported. You're, we're voting that they can, the subcommittee can meet with planning and sustainability to discuss the changes that have been presented here. Well said. All right. Okay. So I'll, I'll second that amended motion. So who was first? Sorry. Let's say Sue. Sue. Okay. Sue made the motion. Molly Sue. seconded. Molly second. Uh, originally, Molly was first, and then Sue was second. And now that it's the modified motion, who is it? Sue is. Making the motion. Okay. Molly. And, that are changes Molly, go Jen. Okay. planning sustainability mm -hmm. and the subcommittee is authorized to go meet with them about those changes if need be. Okay, David, how do you vote? Uh, I, I vote to approve that motion. Rich? Yes. Susan? Yes. Jen? Yes. Rob? Yep. Molly? Yes. Marilyn? That was a yes. <laughs> yes. You can read yes. lips good, Molly. <laughs> so that's seven approved that unanimously. Okay. Um, I know that we're out of time for this 
bracket, but I wanted to ask you, are you, um, I have a little update on the two family by right. Do you want to carve out some time from something else or would you like to just wait till the next, and in reality, I don't think you can wait till the next meeting because the city council is going to vote the first reading on the two family by right ordinance tomorrow. I think since it's timely, we should um, talk about that and scratch other things. How do other people feel? Yes. Marilyn? Okay. I'd like just a moment to, I don't know if I'm in the right place, is to ask to have a visitor come to our next meeting. Um, yep. And uh, is, this the, is this the moment to ask for that or? You can, you can ask and your wish will be granted. Why don't you just right. talk to Rich about it? Yeah. Okay, I'll talk to Rich about it later. Yep. Just kidding. All okay. right. All right, so if I could just have your attention for a couple of minutes. So I, there was a meeting and David, can you can you actually, I can't remember the name of the, the, the uh, committee of the city council that met several weeks ago. The community resources, I think. Thank you. So I, I never, I wasn't able to find the video and I haven't seen any minutes that were posted from that meeting. So after, so I don't know what happened in that meeting, but there was a large, there was a discussion about um, the two family by right um, zoning, uh, zoning changes, the proposed two family by right zoning changes. David, were you able to find anything about that? Uh, no, I still intend to look at the video, but I haven't, haven't done that yet. Okay. All right. So the city council um, has a package in front of it that's gonna be voted upon tomorrow night that actually um, is the first reading for the zoning package, the zoning package, um, the two family by right. And if you remember, um, I actually sent an email back to Carolyn at the end of January after um, Sue, David and I and um, Christina met with Carolyn to talk about some of the particulars about how they were planning on managing the screening section of that two family by right, which is something that all was kind of concerning to all of us. So Carolyn finally got back to me because I prompted her with another email. And um, this was her response to those original questions. Um, she said, the ordinance has now been tweaked to require site plan for two family, unless it is in a URB in a C district and doesn't trigger size threshold. That means that as part of the planning board review, the owner will have to identify the trees that are larger than three inches separately than those larger than 20 inches. I think we would have a simpler process for those under 20 inch to request confirmation if they arrived at a, uh, and given that the board members do site visits as well as we can cover that piece, we mean Carolyn and I, because we do site visits for the SDO. Uh, site plan approval also makes it easier to track planting of the trees since it will be will be a permit condition. Ultimately, because uh, the uh, building commissioner is in charge of zoning code, code enforcement, this includes final sign off on a occupancy permit, uh, which happens after landscaping is completed, just like with all other site plan reviews and special permits. Um, they did change the language. Or I lost my, they did change the language at the very bottom that says that uh, they will utilize the city's tree list and planting guidelines for tree replacement uh, within those okay. two things by right. So that is one good thing. So I sent her an email back and I, you know, I said, please forgive my ignorance, but um, can you actually um, answer a few questions for me? And I asked her, please tell me what a URB and C means in the threshold and is the threshold size 2,000 square feet, which anything built over 2,000 square feet requires planning board approval, thus the STO is um, triggered. Her answer is, is the URC is the district immediately surrounding downtown and has the highest allowed density outside of downtown. URB is the zone, is the area beyond that up to Florence. In those districts, two family is already allowed by right unless there is new construction over 2,000 square feet um, at which point site plan is uh, required. Um, my next question to her was, uh, so uh, as, as regard, as regarding the three inch trees separately uh, than the larger 20 inch trees, 
And so my question to her was, so this means that the, S, the STO and the three inch size tree calculation will run congruent if the proposed building threshold exceeds 2,000 square feet. She said, yes, in URB and URC districts and all other districts, all new two families, despite the size, okay, this is key, in all other districts, all new two families, despite the size, will trigger site plan review. Because of that, the 20 inch and the three inch threshold are triggered. That makes, that makes sense to everyone. It's a lot clearer. Okay. And the only other thing was mitigation. Like what if there's no space on the site? Didn't get an answer for that. She did not answer that. Um, May I email her and ask her? Sure. Okay. Um, and my last question, um, to talk about the zoning code enforcement and the building commissioners. Uh, who does the walk around to make sure all landscaping has been installed properly? Is it the uh, building commissioner? Um, she said, I have always done the reviews for landscaping, except sometimes Louis would do a, a few. Louis Hasbrook's the former building commissioner. But the others don't have the uh, kind, the uh, keen, uh, um, the keenest eye for reviewing plan sets and planting. So that's an internal review that needs to um, probably be. The problem is that because zoning by, so basically what she's saying is that uh, in all our districts, all new two families, despite their size, will trigger site plan. So in the URB and URC districts where by right two family homes will be allowed that don't require a site plan review, the building inspector is the final, has the final say about the plantings. All other districts where two families will actually trigger site plan review, the uh, STO applies, which that little clause that, um, um, that Rob was talking about, the 24 month period. So basically I get to review the plantings and make sure that they stay healthy for 24 months and make folks replace them if they're not. Hmm. So I know that's kind of chopped up, but that's the answer that I got from her today. So that first reading is gonna to happen tomorrow at the city council meeting for the whole package if you're interested in listening in. Anybody have any questions? Well, I guess I just am glad to know that Sue will be following up on the mitigation issue because my observation of the some of these sites where they're putting houses, there's very, very little room to plant a tree at that point, often. And so if they take down several trees, mm -hmm. there won't be much room uh, to plant and, a tree. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, a, I don't know what the process is, but the whole idea that if you have this provision and there's nowhere to put trees, you need something else. I mean, ideally they give money to tree planting so we can plant more trees because that's really our, our big goal in all this. So, so in reality, the, the, two, um, the two districts, URB and URC, which are two family by right, all the other districts will have the STO, which is there's mitigation for that, either in tree planting or it's going to be dollars. Um, and the three inches triggered. And the way that the mitigation for this three inch exists presently is that it's a it's a, a replacement. So if a three inch tree is removed, a one inch tree has to be planted. So I, my 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 thinking is is that they are probably not going to ask for financial mitigation. They're going to basically force folks to replace the trees. Um, at the one inch DBH level. But that needs to be clarified, like Sue and every, uh, a few others have suggested. But, but so, Rich, the question is that where are they going to replace them? In other words, they, they, that is not clear to me. I'm right. assuming it would be somewhere in the construction layout after the construction is complete or the, the plan layout. Right. But, but there won't be room for that in many cases. If they take down a 10 inch tree, then they'd be required to put multiple trees back on these tiny lots. These are very small lots. Right, but you have to remember that if they take a 10 inch tree down, it's just one tree. Okay, so if a tree reaches the, anything below three inches doesn't have to be replaced. If it reaches the three inch threshold, they have to replace it with one tree. It's not like the STO where it's, where it's for every uh, 20 inch tree, you have to actually physically replace 10 inches. That's not the kind of formula. Right, right. I, I get it. Okay. All right. 
it's it's not ideal, but I am very happy about the fact that they are going to the STO when the STO is triggered, it doesn't it doesn't kick out the three inch tree replacement rule, which is a nice way to catch trees that are below the um, twenty inch threshold of uh, DBH. Right, and in most cases, the STO will be triggered because most of Northampton is not in the USB. Uh, c correct. It's really downtown and as far as Florence, it really yeah. captures downtown Northampton and through Bay State Village in the Florence Center. Oh, it includes Bay State Village? Yes. Bay State Village, Bay State Village already is zoned to, to build two family homes by right. That's been zoning that's been on the books for a long time. Okay. You know, and I, I don't know the zoning uh, district well enough to tell you which one it is, but that was a question I asked Carolyn verbally. So floor. when you're, I just have a quick question. When you're talking about two family homes by right, are you talking about like where I grew up a two family home would have been like a row house where they're connected? Or are yeah. you talking, are you talking like I live on, on Winthrop Street, I live on a double lot. So if I sold my house, I'm well aware that probably somebody would buy it and put another house in there. So is that a two-family house, or are you talking two-family house? You know, um, row house. Let me. Uh, I mean, I don't want to belabor this meeting. No, my no. question, if it doesn't relate, and I can ask somebody later. So no. okay, so this is this is uh, from directly from what's on the city council packet, dwelling. So this is um, they are changing accessory apartment to dwelling, two-family two single family below. So a two family dwelling is a residential building type in which two dwelling units are contained within a single freestanding structure, including attached accessory apartments, two unit townhouses, backyard cottages. Units may be in a district, uh, may be in distinct, but attached masses. Um, dwelling, two single family. Two single family dwellings located on one lot is a residential development type in which two freestanding detached single family dwellings are located on a single lot, including detached accessory apartments and backyard cottages and two unit townhouses. One lot. We're down to 10 minutes before yeah. the end of our meeting. Sorry to Thank keep you. interrupting. No, it's good. That's what you're supposed to be doing, that's great. <laughs> yeah, don't apologize. And did that, did that answer your question? Okay. I, I just, I, I guess I have a question. Would, if I were a city councilor, being asked to vote on this two family by right ordinance. I, I think I the the STO actually assumes much more significance, Rich, in light of what you've said. Um, and and I think I would want to know that the UFC was going to propose a 20 to 10 reduction. Um, I mean I don't I also don't think we're ready for prime time like to launch this tomorrow night, but but you know what I'm saying? Like it yeah. it is relevant. It, 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 it is relevant, and in the end, the city council will have it say whatever package comes out of the, you know, the uh, conversations we have with planning and sustainability, um, because it will have an impact on, this will have an impact on folks that are trying to build two family homes in other than the two districts that are exempt, because they will, if they have a non-conforming lot and they take all the trees down on the lot, they will have to if they're trying to make it affordable housing, it's gonna, it could be, become more costly. You know, but on the flip side of that though, the thing, this is the whole reason why the planning and sustainability has uh, constantly said that they don't wanna have the same type of um, financial mitigation as we have for public shade trees because it, it, it is too costly. So they, instead of doing like we did for every inch of deep, uh, every, uh, how, many, how many one inch trees can we fit in a single a DBH versus just keeping it at 20 inches and half of the DBH and the, the cost per caliper is only a hundred. So, I mean, in reality, for example, that built that the construction project that happened on route 10 where all the um, storage units were built, I, I'm going to use a figure of $60,000. That was the mitigation for all the trees that were removed. Mm. The mitigation truthfully, according to, should have actually been, if it was one for one, would have been 120,000. Right. So I- Okay, I, so we have eight minutes. 
David, you bring up a good point, but I mean, I think that I'd still like the 10 inches. It's easier to actually, it's easier to sell the 10 inches because of the fact of the amount of benefit that the 10 inch trees start to give in, in that, at that maturity level. You know, they're about 20 years old and the benefits they provide, um, I think are important to recognize. And this is one way to get it recognized while keeping the financial um, criteria or financial number the same, the mitigation number that is. I don't know, we'll find out when we present it. We'll see what happens. It may come back as a paper airplane to us. I have no idea. <laughs> I hope not. All right, we're down to what, seven minutes? Yes. All right. Yes, all right. Any other, anybody has any questions, just send me an email, but the meeting is tomorrow. Um, I can actually, I'll, I'll, after we're done with the meeting, I'll send you the city council agenda, and then you can actually click on the links on the agenda that show um, the different um, zoning things that I just talked about. Okay. Um, what do you want to, we have a few minutes uh, left. Um, I'll do some really quick under downtown tree siting. Sure. Marilyn and Dave, I need your um, your tree survey. I still haven't got it. Uh, Marilyn sent it to me and I was waiting for the snow to melt basically. So I can, I can uh, finish it like within the next week. Okay, so. great. And I have one more, there's one more section to do besides that and then all eight will be done. And I'll take care of that one more section. Okay. Um, I'm uh, underneath that uh, planning spring uh, 2021. I'm working, uh, we, we secured all the bare root stock and I'm just been working on finishing up the contract, um, the RFP, RFQ for the grow bag trees. So I'm actively working on that with Rob and um, been working with the uh, South Street neighborhood um, group uh, that won the uh, neighborhood tree the neighborhood uh, tree planting project last year, mm. trying to match up trees to their location. So we're we're actively working on that as well. Um, anybody else have anything else under that heading that they want to talk about? Um, the next um, item we had on there was the UFC shared calendar of events. Does anybody, does anyone want to speak to that? Or do you want me to speak to it? What is it? What is it? What is it? That's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, what is it? What okay, is it? so 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 what, what we have found, um, what I have found is that there's a lot of things going, there's a lot of, I think in order for us to understand like where all these different meetings are, because you have um, the two different meetings about redesigning Florence and downtown Northampton. You also have, um, um, City council meetings um, that actually are pertaining to trees, like we, like I just talked about. I'm wondering if it would be helpful if we had a calendar that we could all share, that we could all actually see, instead of having our own. We have, I have an individual calendar that I keep for work with multiple sub calendars, but I wanted to know if anyone wanted to have the benefit of having a shared calendar that would actually show, like you know planting this Wednesday, um, Arbor Day plantings this day, planting Saturday, um, volunteers, uh, you know, subcommittee meeting this day, Urban Forestry Commission meeting that day. Um, you know, it, it means data management by someone or multiples, but it might be something that might be beneficial to us just to keep us a little more organized, especially if we're gonna have to meet off meeting times or have subcommittee meetings for the different goals and objectives. Just a thought. Would this be something on our um, on the Google Drive folder? Um, I I think I, I did, that's a good question. Um, I think what I'd like to do is I like to make it a Google Calendar so we all can have access to it. And for the folks that don't have Gmail, there is a way to actually uh, have you allowed access just to the calendar itself without having a Gmail account, or you can just make a Gmail account and never use it and have the Google okay, why not? Sure. Okay. Sounds great. Three minutes. Okay, so uh, let me, uh, Sue, if you'd be willing to, someone, Sue, if you don't mind, would you be willing to work with me on this a little bit just to get Absolutely. It okay. All right, good. Okay. Yay, yeah, Sue. That's, um, all right. Any other business uh, not anticipated by the chair? Uh, I'm the chair, so I don't have any other business. 
someone else has something, please please feel free to. I, I just wanted to say that um, I've been working with someone in Free Northampton uh, who's uh, interested in um, being able to evaluate the amount of carbon in a tree and the value of that carbon. And so I was going to ask Mela to come uh, and uh, present uh, her work where she's uh, sure. been studying this. And so uh, she's been one of the persons that's been planting with us and uh, a kind of science type. And uh, I found it, it's really a very quickly moving and interesting field. Carbon, the amount of carbon in the tree. And she's been working with Bob um, Leverett on this. So it's sort of a further extension of Bob Leverett's work. Great, Rob. So and next week. I just want to say a quick thank you to David and the group that worked on the STO. That's been like this long, laborious thing we've been trying to get done for a while. And um, David, your like expertise has, I think, has really helped move that along. And to Molly to for organizing that and being kind of on top of the the goals and stuff like that. I, I just appreciate that kind of, you know, people who are like taking on those things and seeing it through. So thank you. In the interest of adjourning at six, I propose we don't do a to-do list and people just um, be responsible for doing what they're supposed to do. Very, very good. And I move that we adjourn. I second it. Any discussion? All in favor, just raise their hands. All right. That's it. We're gone. We Done. did it. Done. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Under the wire. Ten seconds. <laughs> Ten seconds. <laughs> Five seconds. I knew we could do it. Way to go. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Right. Nice Thanks. to see you.